Hey everybody, thanks for joining and welcome to our 14th project Euler.net video. So today we're going to be taking a look at longest callback sequence. The prompt reads that this iterative sequence is defined by this operation where for each element the next element is n divided by 2 if n is even, otherwise 3n plus 1. Then they give us an example of a sequence starting with 13 which eventually reduces down to 1 given these rules up here. They tell us that it's, though it's not yet been proven, people believe that every single number will reduce down to 1. No matter what you start with, the sequence will get you down to 1. They want us to find the starting number under 1 million, which produces the longest chain as compared to the other numbers also under 1 million. Also, any term other than the first term can itself be above 1 million, so as long as we start below 1 million. So, let's think about how we want to solve this. If we took a brute force approach of iterating over all numbers from two to one million. That would be a lot, not only a lot of work, but a lot of redundancy as well, I think, because, for example, if we start at 13, we get this sequence. If we start at 26, 26 would immediately divide down to 13 based on this rule here, at which point the rest of the calculations would be redundant. So I think we can save a lot of time by making a type of cache. So anytime we calculate a sequence, we can save the start number of the sequence and map it to the number of steps it took for that sequence to reduce down to one. So with that in mind, let's go over to our workstation and start coding. I'm going to be coding this in TypeScript. If you're not familiar with that, it's built on top of JavaScript. It is very similar to most other programming languages in terms of syntax. You should have no problem following along. I'm going to be coding this in a class which is not required for the problem. I just want to leverage some resources which I've written. Okay, so I'm going to make a do solve method, which we can set the limit when we call it. So I want to test it with 13 before we go up to 1 million just to make sure that everything looks good. And it will return the number which has the most number of steps in its coalesce sequence. So now let's think about in terms of actually calculating the sequence for a single number. I'll just call it calc colats or calc colats num steps is a better name. And input will be the start value, and the return will be the number of steps. So I'll go ahead and link our map up here. I'll call it cmap colats map is equal to new map, and it will be a number to a number. Okay, so coming down to our calc colat num steps, let's think about how we want to implement this. One thing we need to do is just keep looping until we've followed all of these steps and have reduced our number to one. So I'm thinking some type of while loop. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna say let n is equal to input. We're gonna use n to keep track of each number as we go through the sequence and then while n is greater than one, we will keep calculating. Then I'll have let num steps is equal to zero. We'll start it out with zero and add one each time we do a transformation. Now if n mod two is equal to zero, in other words, we're gonna start with the first rule. We'll say while n mod two is equal to zero, perform that division step. So we're going to say n is equal to n divided by two. Then num steps plus plus. Otherwise, we're going to say n is equal to three times n plus one num steps plus plus. So here we have the actual calculation, but we want to add our caching to it. So, so in order to do caching, we need to First, we want to check if this number itself has already been calculated. So I'll add a check up here. So cmap.has input. Just return that directly. Otherwise, we want to proceed. After the while loop, we'll want to save some values. We not only want to save the value for the input, we want to save the value for every number that appears in our sequence. So if we ran 13 for the first time without running any other sequences first, we should be storing all of these numbers at once in our map. So essentially every time we change the value of n, we'll want to 
record the number of steps. Well, you won't know the number of steps until after everything's done. So what we'll need to do is keep track of each and as we go. So I'm going to make sequence a number array, initialize it with the element and which is input here. So we have that sequence.push n, I'll put that there. Sequence.push n, put that there. Now what we can do is sequence.for each item index, we're going to add those to the cache. So this.cmap.set. So we're setting the item. And the, so the num steps applies for the first element. So each subsequent element will have minus one from the previous element, which means that we're going to say num steps minus index. And lastly, we'll return the num steps itself. So we're almost there. There is one more thing we have to do though. As we're reducing, if at any point, any of the numbers in our sequence, if that number is in our cache, we can skip the rest. So we need to implement logic for that. So what I'm going to do is make one more method on the class that'll help us figure that out. For now, I'll just call it check map. We can rename it once we implement it. And number num steps number. And I'll have it return So we're going to return the same type of as what we put in, so that way we can just make the replacements. And if there's nothing in the map, we can just return the same thing. So if this.cmap.has n, we'll set number of steps plus equal to this.cmap.get n, and we'll set n is equal to 1. Then we'll return n and number of steps. So that way, if we don't have it in the map, don't do anything, just return what we got. Otherwise, increment the number of steps and set n to 1 so that we can indicate that we've finished. So const map check is equal to this dot check map and num steps. n is equal to map check dot n num steps is equal to map check dot num steps. And we will do the same thing here. I'll format it just so it looks nice. Okay. Now we should be good with the way we have this implementation here. So what I'm going to do, let me just uh, comment this out for a second. I'm going to directly test the count collapse num steps before we test the full implementation. So return this dot calc collapse num steps 13. Let's run that. So we got nine. So let's make sure that's right. So we 1340, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That is correct. So let's get rid of that. Now let's actually implement our do solve. So what do we want to do here? We want to calculate the collapse number of steps for each number from two to a million and we'll have optimized performance because we've already you put cache right within the method so we can just do our loop. So as we go we need to keep track of two things the maximum number so far and the number of steps corresponding to that maximum number so I'll initialize those values let max n is equal to 1 let max num steps is equal to 0 then we'll loop let i is equal to 2 i is less than 1 million I++. Plus plus. I'm going to rename that to n just so we can have a little bit more clarity. And steps will be the calculation of the number of steps for this n. We'll check if n steps is greater than max num steps. Max n is equal to n max num steps is equal to n steps. Lastly, we'll return that value. Max n, that is. Coming into here, we will return this dot do solve 100 million, or 1 million. And I just caught that. I hard coded that value into do solve, but really you want to use what we have in the parameter.
Let's run this now and see what we get. Okay, we got this value here in a little over one second. I'm gonna copy that and let's see if we got the right answer. Okay, good, so we got the correct answer. Okay, so I'm satisfied with the approach that we have here. We were able to save on a lot of calculations by using this caching technique of matching, mapping the number n for the sequence, the start of the sequence, to the number of steps of that sequence. So any time, at any point of the calculation, we reach a value where we already had, we can just get it from the cache and finish everything up. So that includes while we're in the middle of a calculation, even if the original number was not cached. So with that, we saved a lot of time, definitely. So I'm, yeah, I'm satisfied with this implementation. So that covers the content for today. If you made it to the end, please like the video, subscribe to the bell icon for notifications for more Project Euler videos. I'm gonna be posting these at a rate of one per day. Thanks for watching.